Welcome to Wine Library TV. I am your host, Gary Vay, Nerd Chuck, and this, my friends, is The Thunder Show, AKA the internet's most passionate wine program. And before we get into this great show about Greco de Tufo, uh, a wonderful white wine variety from Campania, um, and, uh, and uh, talk about uh, these really interesting acidic white wines, uh, I, I should reference Mott, we should probably talk about the elephant in the room, that we have just followed up what is easily, by community standards, uh, by the comments, the worst show. It took me 984 shows to really have a true clunker. I mean, I had emails from people that said, truly, I've watched everyone and this is the worst show you ever did. Um, people said that I was trying to trick you into thinking it was a good show. You were passionately mad just now. You were like, I liked it. But, Here's what basically happened. It was rushed. And you know, that's that's the bottom line. I, I think you you see in the episode that I do reference Lizzie real quick. I didn't want to leave you with only three episodes in the week. And uh, you know, I messed up. And so you gotta be a big man and woman to step up when you've uh, messed up. I think that it could have been much better. It was clearly rushed. I apologize to the Vayner Nation. Um, I know NYP's gonna say do not say you're sorry, but I do feel like you need to say you're sorry when you are, and I apologize I, that uh, the episode did not deliver. Um, I do appreciate the enormous amount of comments, 566 comments as of this taping. Clearly, I've been misplaying it. I've been pounding out great shows and begging to get up to 300 comments. We now know that you know what you need to do is go the other way, so I, I think from here on out, I'm gonna go in the other direction and continue to deliver sub par, you know, non-inspiring, lack of passion episodes of Wine Library TV. So I hope you enjoy them. Thank you for making me realize what I needed to deliver to get the crack cocaine that I love so much, which is comments from my community. Um, in all seriousness, I apologize, and let's start up another uh, 15 awesome episodes for you guys. So let's uh, let's uh, focus in on Greco de Tufo. Uh, it's from Campania, which is when you look at the boot, when you look at the boot of, um, of Italy, you know how it's a boot, it's like right above here on the heel. So it's on the west side, right above here where Campania is, Greco de Tufo, um, from a lot of people, was uh, was brought over as a varietal during the Greek colonization of Italy. So when the Greeks kind of came over and took over way back in the old school, um, they brought over a lot of varietals and, and Greco is to believed to be um, uh, one of the uh, uh, varietals that was brought over and and became such a big play. It's become an enormously important um, varietal in uh, in Campania. Uh, there's about 2,700 acres that are under DOC uh, G uh, classification. There's about 118,000 acres of it planted in Campania, and I'm a big fan. And we have two um, producers that have traditionally been some of the best Greco. Uh, makers in all of Italy. This is both the 2009 versions of these wines. I've had multiple vintages of both, but never in the 09 vintage. So, 09 pretty solid vintage in Campania, um, and I'm excited about this. So Mott, let's uh, zoom in, let's get into the first one, which is a producer that produces some of my favorite wines in the world. This is the Greco de Tufa 2009 um, from Pueri di San Gregorio. San Gregorio is making some great, great stuff. Um, and, uh, and I'm a big fan. Now, there's been some recent DNA uh, tests showing that uh, Greco de Tufo is also the exact same grape as Esperino, which has uh, been gr gr grown around parts of the world as a different varietal, so that's a little bit of a, a fun fact. Um, and when Greco is done right, you know, if you've never had Greco, think of it as a little bit more of an acidic, little leaner Viognier, but really interesting wines. Really golden yellow color, Mott, you can see here. Let's get it. Let's get it. All right, let's give it a little bit of a sniffy sniff. So you get this really intriguing apple thing coming out on this wine, and you can smell that it's a little bit more aromatic and, and does have that oily, I, I guess when I taste, and excuse me, when I smell Viognier, Roussan, Marsan, these roan white varietal wines, they smell more dense. You know, they're, they're, they're just deeper. Um, Almost like Chardonnay smells compared to Sauvignon Blanc. It feels heavier, it smells heavier, if that makes sense. I know you don't smell weight, but you get it. You get the complexities. This has some great green apple flavors coming across. A little bit of smokiness, which is nice, and a little like a mochi kind of thing. You know, mochi, uh, you know, the, the Japanese dessert, you know? So get a little bit of that. White flower, very aromatically pretty. Let's give it a whirl.
wonderful acidity. I get this kind of like honeycomb cereal flavor coming through. You know, so grained up sugarless morning cereal, meets some apples, little granola action, so it feels very morning to me. You know, oatmeal, that kind of stuff. There's a little bit of that graininess, but there's a heavy spritz here. There's acid for days, good sharp acid that will cut through fish, um, you know, even like light birds, hen, Cornish hen that comes to mind, pheasant, um, very intriguing white wine for that kind of you know, bird, if you're doing lighter sauces, because you start getting heavy red sauce, you may overpower this wine. Very clean, very fresh, very vibrant. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm appreciating what this wine brings to the table, and there's flavor. A lot of people who are watching right now are not as interested in Riesling or Sauvignon Blanc because it lacks flavor. It's a little too light. This, to me, is a tremendous alternative. If there was ever a true in-between Chardonnay and Sauvignon Blanc style wine, this would be it. And it's far more interesting and dynamic and priced better, in my opinion, than Pinot Grigio. This is a $17 bottle of wine, 89 points Antonio Galloni. There's some pear, there's some minerality, and overall, I'm feeling this wine. It's very fresh and vibrant. I'm gonna one-up Galoni. I'm going 90 points on this. I think it's spectacular, and to me, this is quintessential under $20 white wine. This has been a wine in prior vintages that when Lizzie and I go out, and we're going to see a play, and we're in a, you know, we gotta be out of here in an hour, kind of like, you know, maybe a movie, dinner thing, and we want to do a quick white wine. I've ordered this specific producer's Greco in the past because oftentimes you're talking about 45 to $65 on the list. Super fair, very easy to drink, but isn't making you feel like you just ordered glorified H2O. Good wine, 90 points, way to go, uh, Gringorio. Uh, big fan of their wines. They make some amazing white red wines as well. And uh, this has always been, if you're a Greco de Tufo fan, this is an iconic battle. This is a little Ali Frazier because these two producers really, really stand out. Uh, Benito Ferreira is producing some of the great Greco de Tufo in the world. This is his 2009 vintage. Um, this wine is 88 to 90 points Galoni, 16 US dollars. Um, this is 450 to 600 uh, miles, uh, uh, meters, excuse me, above sea level. Um, and he's practicing organic farming. Very interesting producer. Now I think one thing you'll notice, it's a little bit more golden than the Gregorio. Mara, can, you, can you get that context from what we're doing here? Little more golden on the color, so that first and foremost stands out for me. Let's give it a snippy sniff. So there's a little more stinkiness here, so the organic thing starts popping in your mind. Is there something different that's going on? Because you get less of the white fruit, that pear and apple, cut them in half, it's a little white in there. Um, and you get a little bit more of a, there's a burnt rubber component, almost like Riesling type tones on the nose. It smells a little more like an Albarino or a Riesling to me, more so than anything else. Little hint of funkiness, which is interesting. A little pineapple as well, coming through from a fruit standpoint. Let's give it a whirl. This is a heavyweight battle. Really nice peach flavor coming through on the, on the wine. I, an apple cider, so both wines are heavily um, directed by this apple flavor, so if you like green apple, I think you could really find yourself enjoying these wines because there is that sour, puckering green apple thing going on. Uh, reminds me, of, like, remember the blow pop rings? You know, and there was green apple, uh, love that one. You know, both these wines, and I, I, I drank a little more while I was sipping that one as well, they really suck you into drinking because the minerality waters your mouth and there's like this want to consume these wines. Also, great pear, great apple, a little more peach on this wine and a little heavier. This is a little bit more viscous. Um, so it really comes down to the classic way of like the way you look at, you know, Mott, who, who's uh, prettier, Mila Kunis or Jessica Alba? I'm not, I don't know the person. Mila Kunis is uh, that 70s show. She was just in Black Swan. Oh, the dark hair. Yes. Um, oh, they're both pretty. Well, they're both the same style. Yeah. What about, uh, what about uh, who's like a blonde superstar? Um, who do you think is really cute, famous girl? Go. You can go old school on me. You want to go Farrah Fawcett? I'm more no, than happy with that. She, <laughs> she, uh, I can't think of her name. 
can't think of anybody off the top of my head. Give me a minute. It comes down to you deciding what style you like. Both these wines, you know, it's they're just different styles. I can see everybody who's watching this right now are gonna like, you know, um, for the ladies in the crowd instead of just doing dude stuff. You know, some of you think Mark Sanchez is cute, some think Tom Brady's cute. It really comes down to what kind of style you like. Clearly, I'm much, I think Sanchez is dramatically more handsome than Brady, but that's a whole other thing for another show. This comes down to styles. It's a little bit bigger. Um, this is crisper and cleaner. This feels like something I would have with fish with dinner. This feels like something that I would have on the porch as an aperitif before the fish. Same varietal, great producers, but there is a viscosity to this wine. It's a little heavier, makes you think about it a little bit different. Both excellent wines, 16 and $17. You can see Galoni was baffling it with himself. 88 to 90, 89. These wines are incredible. Greco de Tufo has been a varietal that I've seen consistently perform well under $20. So um, both of these producers are creme de la creme. I mean, these are like top of the line producers, guys. It's just the varietal's not that expensive. And to me, when I compare this to a Santa Margarita Pinot Grigio or the or the vast sea of underwhelming Pinot Grigios or reserved Sauvignon Blancs from New Zealand, it always makes me yearn that more people knew about wine because these undiscovered gems are there. This is a show, and if you've been following me a long time, you know when I get on my high horse and we talk about a new varietal or region and I get excited about it, oftentimes the wines underperform. I'd even say 70, what would you say, 60 or 70% of the time, Bob, we're disappointed. We're like, all right, today's gonna be the big Tanat show and the wines suck. Both these wines delivered. I'm scoring both of them 90 points. It's a double 90. And in my world, that's better than a double rainbow. Good wines, awesome stuff. Um, well made and uh, showing tremendous and it's nice to see off the worst show of all time and on this very special Valentine's Day. You know, so happy Valentine's Day to all of you out there. Uh, it's nice to see the wines at least step up. I put the wristband up, trying to get back to my mojo. Got real focused for you today and I hope we delivered a show with um, some quality content. I hope you go out and discover the wines at Greco de Tufo, uh, Campania's best, not best kept, Definitely not best kept secret to the wine world, but definitely to the masses, the CKCs who are watching right now. Best kept secret that, you know, to the general wine drinking public, public and public, uh, under 20 bones, delivered, both did today, spectacular, fun show. 180 points is nice out of two wines. Question of the day, what are you drinking, or depending on when you're watching, what did you drink for Valentine's Day and who did you have it with? And if you're single, don't feel sad. Just say what you did by yourself watching Batman reruns. I did it, it's the way you roll. You, with a little bit of me, we're changing the wine world. Whether they like it, which is usually how I want it, or not, which is the way it happened the other day.